should have been us on that cross. It should have been me. It should have been you. But Jesus intervened. The sinless, stainless, spotless, pure, and holy Son of the living God took our place. How deep, how wide, how far. You see, there's no distance. Jesus wouldn't travel to rescue you. There's no pit, there's no hole, there's no trap so strong that Jesus couldn't set you free from it. It's no sin so black, so deep, so dark, so awful that he won't forgive. With gratitude, we come to celebrate the table of the Lord this morning. Let's take the emblems and... Take the bread, let's lift it up. You're the savior of the world, Jesus. You're also the bread of life. I feel like there's some people here this morning 
you're not enjoying your life very much right now. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but I think there would be quite a few of them. Maybe there's sickness, maybe there's financial stress in your life, maybe there's strife in your marriage, maybe your kids are acting out. We have the opportunity to trade in our old life. The old life of Adam, the old life of the carnal man, the natural man. To exchange it, to receive by faith the life of Christ. The saving life of Christ. Lord, we come to make a trade today. We come to do a deal. Let's make a deal. Amen? Amen. Lord, we want to give you our old life. Amen. And we want to receive your life right now. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. This is the bread of life. As you partake of this little bread, piece of bread, this wafer here in just a moment, I want you to see by the eye of faith that you really are giving up your old life and you're receiving his new life. Life that sustains, life that nourishes, life that overcomes, life that is abundant. Jesus said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take it and eat it in remembrance of me. Let's eat together the bread of life the body of Christ in Jesus' name. And now let's take the cup of the new covenant. While we were in prayer before the service this morning, I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said he wanted to minister healing in this portion of the service. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's cleansing in the blood of Jesus. And there's healing in the blood of Jesus. If you're someone that doesn't have any physical problems right now, you're not sick, you don't have any issues that you know of, you're healthy and strong, hallelujah. Go hug somebody else and pray that it rubs off on them too, okay? But I felt like the Lord said, for those of you who don't need healing right now, I want you to vicariously take upon yourself, just try to imagine Somebody that is struggling, that is in pain, that is debilitated. And try to put yourself in their shoes and their circumstances. Let the Holy Spirit stir empathy in you and compassion in you for those who may not have that gift of health that you have right now. Jesus, you took our sickness upon yourself. You took our pain you took our disease. You took our dysfunction, our disabilities. You took every weakness. And you offer us your strength. I pray, Lord, for a wave of healing virtue to sweep over this church as we partake in just a moment, Lord. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord. There's power in the blood. Cleansing power. Soul-winning power. Healing power in the blood of Jesus. Let's drink together in Jesus' name.
Jesus. Let's hold steady in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come with your healing power. Come with your healing virtue in Jesus' name. Lift your hands to the Lord. Reach out and take hold of it. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. I speak to cancer, I command it to go in Jesus' name. I speak to tumors, I command them to disappear in Jesus' name. I speak to arthritis and I pray that the pain, the stiffness would go in Jesus' name. There's been a lot of um, respiratory stuff going around lately. Cold, flu symptoms, fever, even COVID is still hanging around. Father, I pray for all of those issues. We, we command every one of them to disappear now from your people in Jesus' name. I want to take just a moment. If you're, if you're here today, if you hear, I, always, I always laugh when other pe preachers say that, and I just said it myself, because if you weren't here today, you wouldn't be here to hear me say, if you're here today. But if you're sick right now, if you're right in the middle of some kind of illness, maybe you have a fever, maybe you can't get over a cough, or maybe there's something going on, if that's you right now, you're in the middle of a, of a, of a sickness, just put your hand up. Don't run away from them, everybody, okay? Just put your hand up. If you need prayer right now, you're in the middle of something that you're battling, some physical. Keep it up high. Okay? Keep it up high. All right, those of you around, if you see someone whose hand is raised and saying, yeah, Pastor, I'm sick right now, put your hands on them. Gather around them right now. Pray for them in Jesus' name. Let's, I'm going to pray in just a moment here. Let's believe for a wave of healing virtue in this place. Don't miss out on this. Even if you got, oh, Pastor, it's only a little sniffle. It's nothing to worry about. I don't care. Jesus heals little things, and he heals big things, okay? We ready? Father, in Jesus' name, by the authority and power in us, we speak healing. We declare and decree healing. We command healing in Jesus' name over your children. Father, we command the spirit of infirmity to leave. Father, all those little ailments and those little aches and pains that afflict those who are getting up there in years, and some of you can relate to this, and I can relate to this too. Father, we say, no, we're not going to accept this as the inevitable outcome of our lives. Healing is the children's bread. We partake of that bread of healing now in Jesus' name, and we speak health, and we receive health in our physical, our mortal bodies in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Let's press into worship a little more. All my words fall short. I got nothing new. How could I express? all my gratitude I could sing these songs as I often do but every song must end and you never do sing that again all my words all my words fall short I got nothing new how could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands praise you again and again cause all that I have is a
But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Just one with my arms fresh wide, I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. All that I have is a
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good, Father. Thank you, God, for your presence, Lord. Amen. All right. Um, let's go ahead and take a minute to mingle. Uh, take, go ahead and take a minute to, you know, to say high five. Or, I'm sorry, to say hi or give your, your neighbor a high five. Um, get, just get to know them in, that, in those 60 seconds. Bless them and invite them to, to lunch or exchange your phone number. <laughs> So we have a couple of announcements before anything else. Um, today there is going to be a baby shower. Woo hoo! Woo hoo! So please stay after the service to join us to bless baby Kalani. Where's baby Kalani at? Oh, that's right, it's a baby shower. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I know, and I have three kids of my own, too. Um, I, I, there's another announcement, too, that um, if you gifted or, or donated or tithed more than, I believe it's $250 for the year of 2023, our sister Marsha has your... You're given a uh, gifting statement, right, for, for last year. Um, so if you, if, you're, if you need that document for taxes purposes or for whatever purposes you may need it for, go ahead and see Sister Marsha, right? And um, next we're going to have some video announcements now. Woo! You want to be... Uh, editing, whatever it is that you want to do, uh, please do. So reach out to us. Be there not. Hey, Covenant of Grace. We're back. This time we're bringing you, let's face it, it's all February announcements now. Except for one thing, I think. So let's call it February announcements. Stay tuned. On the first Friday of February, February 2nd, we're going to be having a worship and prayer warfare night. What that means is that all the ministries in church will be joining together and we'll be going to, we're going to be praying for our nation. We're going to be interceding for the people and we're going to be praising and worshiping God. So I'll be leading worship. You want to make sure you want to be there, not just because I'm leading worship, but you, know, you don't want to miss that. So I'll see you there, February 2nd, Friday, 7 p.m. Sunday on February 4th, Drew Isaacs will be joining us with a powerful word for the congregation. You do not want to miss out. That's going to be next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. February 16th, Restoring the Marriage Altar. That's a conference which missionaries from uh, Argentina, Juan Carlos and Liliana Sanchez, will be coming to impart on us. The registration is $40 and includes a three-course meal, uh, a remembrance item, and uh, of course access to the conference. And of course, you want to be there. Uh, you want to make sure that you make pay uh, checks payable to Covenant of Grace and just in the memo say marriage conference or just give me the money and we'll make it work somehow or another. We'll see you there. 
Saturday, February 17th. So we're going to be having a singles conference for anybody that wants to get together and join us so that we're gonna have dinner, conference. It's gonna be a great opportunity for fellowship. So it's $40 a person. You can make a check payable to Covenant of Grace and just in the memo put singles conference or if you're doing cash, you wanna put that in an envelope, just put singles conference and you'll be registered and ready to come out and have a great time. Coming out towards the end of the month, almost at the beginning of March, we're gonna have again the prophetic conference by Christian International. So you wanna stay up to date, just you know, keep on checking in, but that's gonna be an important thing for you to uh, attend because that's prophetic training and you wanna be part of that prophetic movement. So we'll see you there. We need your help. We are looking for people to participate in the creation of these video announcements. That's right. So if you wanna be either in front of the camera, or behind of the camera, uh, editing, whatever it is that you want to do, uh, please do. So reach out to us and we'll make it happen. Thank you so much. Bye. Then we did great. Bye. I'm so proud of us. We're so good. <laughs> we're phenomenal. We're the best. I went from we're not cutting it to <laughs> we're amazing. <laughs> Why would you ever want to get rid of us? <laughs>We have one correction on that. The singles conference is $20 a person, not 40. It hardly seemed right to do 40 for a couple then. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Brother Doug. Um, for those who are interested in those, um, the marriage and the single conferences that we're having, um, you can go ahead and see Susie. Uh, she will have the sign-up sheet and the list for the coming events for the marriage conferences, for the single conferences, and for the CI conference, okay? Yay! <laughs> All right, um, now we get, we're gonna go ahead and lift up a prayer for our offering. We can go ahead and continue praising the Lord through that, okay? Let's bow our hands. Um, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for, for our finances, Father God, for everything that you have provided until today, Lord God. Father God, you are so good, Lord God, that you have not forsaken us, Lord God. You have not. We, we, we have a roof over our head, Father God. We have food, Father God, and, and more than that, Lord. We just thank you, Father God, and I just ask you, Lord, that you may bless, Father God, uh, those everyone that's, that's contributing, Father God, to, to your kingdom, Father God, to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we say amen. 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 This is the moment when you guys come up. <laughs> <All right.
Que todo es muy incierto en este desierto Mi vulnerabilidad está al descubierto Siento que mi barca está muy lejos de tu puerto ¿Por qué será que ya no sale el sol en mis días? ¿Por qué mis noches son tan frías? ¿Por qué será que siento que me falta algo? ¿Por qué este camino gris se siente tan largo? Sé que está sobrando aunque no te sienta Sé que está sobrando aunque no te vea Sé que voy a salir de esta odisea Sé que voy a ganar esta pelea Sé que va a cesar esta marea temporaria Que en ti yo viviré una vida extraordinaria Que aunque no pueda entender Me consola saber que todo va a estar bien Y todo va a estar bien Everything will be alright The whole world's in his hands The whole world's in his hands And the darkness and the trial Thank you, worship team. Amen, amen. And then just a correction, I'm not sure if you guys heard Brother Doug, but the conference for singles, it's only $20, okay? Two zero. See Susana or Susie at, um, at the end so you guys can, can go ahead and sign up or I'm gonna go after you guys. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and we now go ahead and welcome our pastor, senior pastor, Emilio Parada. Hello, hello, all right, amen. Uh, the kids, kids are dismissed. You can go to your classes. I know they're excited to go. Amen. Kids are dismissed. God is good, amen? Ah, oh, man, I'm sorry. I think you guys are still asleep. God is good, amen? And all the time, he is really good, amen? Even when we don't see him working, God is working, amen? Even when we don't feel it sometimes and we're just tired and we're going through maybe this fasting that we're going through and uh, prayers and stuff, and it's like, where is God? But God is good. Uh, huh? The youth? Okay. The youth also. Wait, but before the youth go, I, I, I want to pray over somebody before they go. So um, we're going to have my wife uh, join me and help me out because my voice, I want to save it a little bit. Yes. I want to save it a little bit for the preaching because I did get sick this week. But God got me here and ready to go. <laughs> Amen. God is good. That's why I say God is good. In the midst of it all, God is good. Amen. All right, we had a very, very lovely young lady that pretty much has been here through um, junior high, high school, and even before. Melina, will you please come to the front? We're gonna be praying for her today because, amen, amen, she's going to be getting baptized. She's not currently attending Covenant of Grace because she lives very far, you guys. So, but she's going to be getting baptized today in her church. And we really wanna be uh, praying for her life Amen. God is doing a 180 in her life. And let us all bless her. And, um, and elders and uh, uh, apostles, if you guys are here, please help us bless Melina today. Amen. Hallelujah. And the rest of you, please extend your hands towards her, please. Thank you very much. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful testimony. Father God, we've seen her journey. Father, we've seen where she's been. Father God, and Lord, you are so good. That brought her back to you, Father God, and just wrap her in your awesome arms, Father. You bless her on this day, Father God. She is getting ready to take the next step in baptism, Father. Lord, which is 
Lord, God, bless her with your mighty power and authority to go through her, Father, and she knows, Father God, who she is all the time, Father God, and whom she belongs to, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, as you revive that fire and let it kindle, Father God, keep going, Father God, all the way through her life, Father, until she graduates to you, Father. So, Lord God, we thank you and we bless her, Father God. We bless her family, Lord God. We know that she, they've been praying for her a lot, Father. So thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, as you, Father God, are holding her tight and let her never letting go of her again, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful blessing that we have her here, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I just want to encourage you that Baptism connects you to people all through history back to the time of Christ. You're taking a step that many people, when they've taken it, they've been thrown out of their families. They've been set themselves up with a target on themselves to be persecuted or killed. You're taking a courageous step that every Christian should take to declare, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. I am willing to follow him, and I believe that his life is my life. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Amen. What a testimony. She has a tremendous testimony, and one day she'll share it. But I just can't believe what God is doing. And we're just going to go sort of what the Word of God is going to be doing. And this is nothing that we set up or nothing. She just showed up this morning and just wanted to share what God is doing in her life and her family. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. I, was just gonna say one more. I just want to say one more thing. Melina, you have been gifted with fire on your spirit with compassion in your heart that reaches places that no one else can go, reaches people that no one else can see. But God has given you eyes to see where pain is so you can go and rescue those and snatch them out of the hands of Satan and bring them to the, to the truth, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. So be bold, Mija. Be very bold and just know that all of this family loves you and this will always be your home. Amen. Man, thank you. God bless you. Wow, the only way we did it right now is because they are going to have to go leave during the service. So, but hope they can stay a bit. But what a testimony what God is doing. Amen. And that's why we say God is good. And all the time. Amen, amen, amen. And this is going to be connecting with what God is going to be talking to us this morning. And uh, we're going to be uh, ending, uh, well, uh, the fasting today, amen? Those who joined us, woo! Uh, I guess there's only one or two that fasted, oh man. Everybody else was like, fine, right? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I know that many are fasting. Huh? The youth, I'm sorry. Yes, the youth got to be dismissed, thank you, sorry. A lot of the, uh, some youth also were, um, were fasting with us. Uh, a, a lot of people from young to old that were fasting with us, it's amazing uh, to see that, what God is doing, amen? And that they were part of it, something that part of it that God wants us all to let it be a natural thing in our life, not just something we set up corporate. But you can also have your your individual fasting, whatever you're going through sometimes or test or trial, or even when you're blessed, you can still do it. Amen. And God does those things for a reason and blesses us in those moments. And we don't see it, though, or sometimes it may get even worse, but God is working and God is doing great things behind the scenes. Amen. Amen. All right, I hope you're there. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm encouraged by the testimony of this morning, what God did, uh, doing in her life. Uh, and it's, uh, we've seen uh, the journey, me and my wife, through it and a lot of things. But we're just encouraged what God is doing. Amen. We're going to be looking uh, mostly in a minute. We'll, we'll go there, but mostly in the ba book of Acts, chapter 3. That's where we're going to be starting and working and seeing what God is going to be bringing us this morning as we end our fast and give it over to him and say, Lord, thank you for those who made it. Maybe some of you failed along the way. Don't feel bad. You know, it's hard. It's hard, but it's, it's just working with our flesh. That's what it's doing. It's working with our walk with God and, and we're going to trip, but God picks us up and says, keep going, right? We're going to, we're going to fail probably, but it says, he doesn't say stop and stop doing it. Don't keep doing it. No, he wants us to keep going. Amen. Because God loves us. He doesn't want to see us fail. He wants to see us succeed. Amen. So here we're going we're gonna to start with this. How many of you, when was the last time that you got on a scale to weigh yourself? This morning. Oh, okay. 
A lot of you saying, no, uh, I don't look at those things. <laughs> it's, it's a sin. <laughs> Many of us in here probably avoid the scales, amen? I was like, uh-uh, not here. If someone that would ask you, have you stepped on a scale lately, you would say no. Other people would say step on it and maybe just run out of the room. But one reason that people don't step on it or step on it and leave, they don't want sometimes. We don't want to face the truth. Amen? I'll put myself in there. And they, they don't want it revealed. We don't want it revealed to us. Or that maybe we return back to our favorite taco stand or our favorite dessert or our favorite bread. Amen? And I get amen on that part. I'm not just kidding. <laughs> no, we got to fight it. <laughs> you don't want to reveal. We don't want to reveal that the scale is going up and not going down. Think that somehow not getting on a scale is going to change something. That learning, that leaning on it in one way and learning this way, that's going to help us. And say, oh, look, I lost five pounds right there. It's not like that, amen. Causing it to lie and has changed something. It is an unwillingness to face the reality that keeps us from not benefiting sometimes from our health. You must be willing to tell the doctor what's wrong if you want to make it right, Amen truth, right? And you and I must be willing to tell God what's wrong with our attitudes or our actions. And I think this is where fasting came in and started working on some things, amen? Because when we started fasting, some actions started to come out saying, oh, where my coffee? Right? Or our attitude, quiet, I haven't had my coffee yet. Or whatever it was, Right? our actions and our attitudes and God starts working on those. And that's what God wants to see. And so they're still in there, but you haven't seen them, but through this fasting, you're going to see it. And I know a lot of us saw it. Amen. And I'll include myself in there on some things that God was working even in me still and is what we did, what we said, who that would block fellowship with our Lord and savior. And if we want to hear from heaven, like according to Psalm 66, 18, which says this, I'll read it for you. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So this wasn't just something maybe a lot of people took for a diet or something. No, no, it was for something that had to die inside of us to get rid of it so that the Lord may speak unto our lives. Amen. Because we all want to hear from heaven. Amen. Okay, I got a two or three people I want to hear from God. The other ones, we'll keep praying for you. But God wants to talk to us, amen? So let me tell you this part. Sometimes when you want to remodel something, you got to be willing to tear stuff out, amen? Those who know construction. And it might get messy, right? Before you can put the new stuff inside. There's a lot of us that God... A lot of us want God to remodel our circumstances, but don't want him to tear out the sin sometimes that's in us. And if he is not free to tear out our unrighteousness, he is not free to remodel our lives. Amen? And put them in order, in the order that we have been praying for and been wanting to see in our lives. That is... It was with fasting and prayer and the word of God has been doing in these 21 days of fasting. Just in case you were wondering, what is this about? That's what it's about. And we're going to hear a story this morning about a crippled man, and we'll go there in a minute. But first, let's pray and thank God for what he has done in these past 21 days, amen, and is doing and will keep on doing if we let him do the remodeling in our lives, amen? You want that? You want remodeling? Amen. Then let us agree with the Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for giving, Father God, us the privilege of walking through this season of fasting, Lord God. 
with you where you show us your sweet blessings, Lord God. As Lord God, we are praying for the nation, Father God, and also the nation, Father God of Israel, Lord God, our loved ones, Father God, our prodigal sons and daughters, Father God, praying that they come home, Father God. Father God, for our daily needs, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the strength and courage to continue on, Lord God, in praying and having our individual fastings also, Lord. The time with you that we have had, Lord God, been precious, Lord God. Maybe for some it has been hard, it has been more turmoil, more issues, but it seems that you are working things out and taking things out of us, Father God. And we thank you and we allow you to do that this morning with your word and your truth. Let it just keep on working in us all, Father God. Lord God, we surrender to you in this morning, Lord. Let your word do what it's got to do on this morning in each and one of us. We allow the Holy Spirit to minister unto our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to be, like I said, starting mostly in Acts chapter 3. You want to get ready. We're going to stay there most of the time. As we get into the buffet of the word, amen? Everybody's like, hey, I'm waiting for that after the service. Hey, no. We're getting into the word right now, amen? You see, that's what happened also when you, when you spend time with God in, in prayer and fasting and, 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 and worship. It becomes a buffet of the Holy Spirit, of just his presence of who he is. He releases a lot of things that he wants to give on to us, Amen? Chapter, Acts 3, chapter 2, if you're there, there was a lame man, there was a crippled man, and we're going to go there, and it says this, and a certain man was lame, he was crippled from the mother, from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask for alms, meaning begging for money, and from those who entered into the temple of the Lord. So first of all, we are told that he is a lame, crippled man. Amen? And some of us, we're probably sitting here lame, crippled spiritually. That's what I'm talking about. But we are told that he had been crippled ever since he was in his mother's womb. Whoa. Or ever since he came out. Amen? So meaning that ever since he was born, he has been crippled, meaning that he was not able to stand on his own two feet, and it's hard to man up or woman up if he can't stand up. Amen? He couldn't stand on his own two feet according to the word. He was 40 years old according to the word. So he put more, to put it more into perspective, half maybe of his lifetime he was crippled. He was lame. He could not walk on his own two feet. We're told another thing about this man. We're told that his whole life was dependent on what other people did for him. Did you hear that part? Let it sink in. We're told that his whole life was dependent on what other people did for him or maybe spoke over him or maybe pronounced over him or how he was no good. He wasn't going to get healed or this and that was spoken over this man. I don't know, maybe if you, some people, God is speaking to you maybe, but let me tell you, God has the solution for you. We'll talk about it a little bit forward. Because it causes, because it says that every day he was carried by other people too big. So you know, there are the lame, the crippled man, when everyone else had to take care of you, when everyone else has to take care of you, when everybody else has to bring you to where you need to go because you are not able to get there on your own, this man was definitely crippled, amen? In some way, in, some, in how we feel maybe like that sometimes. It's interesting in verse 2, he was at the house of God, meaning he was at church every day at the temple of God. Hmm, interesting. 
Acts 32 says, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which he called beautiful to ask for alms, meaning ask for offerings from those who entered into the temple. He was had an hand out and he was asking, amen. So that means that he can, we can be, you can be at the church every single day. Wow. And yet still be crippled. Wow. Without life, maybe, without no movement forward, maybe with no hope, not able to stand on his own two feet. Wow. Because even though he was at church, nothing had changed in his life. And this is what we want God to do and come and work in us and fasting on some things that have not changed in our life. We are living in a day where many men and women are lame. You might be able to stand physically, stand up, but that is not one kind of lame that there is. There is also a main, mental crippleness. Where we as, maybe as Christians, we are not able to take our kingdom responsibilities in the, in the church or in our communities or in a city or in a state or in our nation like we should be taken for. Amen? What's going on in our nation today? We got to stand up. Amen? We got to stand up on our own two feet. And God, how can you help us? And we'll talk about it. And it says there is also a social crippleness going around where Christians are expecting maybe the government to take care of certain things that we know if we would dare take the word at the, what it says and take the fasting and the praying at what it says and, and start doing those things that God can do something about it. Amen? But sometimes that is where we become crippled. There's also spiritual crippleness where we think that the church only is supposed to lead devotions for our kids or, or our times of prayer or, or praying over our kids only because sometimes we're busy at home with our careers, our social media and other things or maybe we're just lazy spiritually at home. And where God also wants to be leading our home, not just here in the house of God. Amen. So that's something that God is working out in a lot of us. Crippleness can come in all shapes and sizes. But it all bears the same characteristics. And that is someone else has got to do for you. That someone else has to go to, go to do for you what you will not do yourself. And choose not to do, right? And even if you are spending time also in the house of God. So we find this man who was in physical condition and crippled. But it is to put, but it is put in this passage to make a, spirit, a spiritual point in all of our lives. Who was not able to make it on his own. Whatever the cause, whatever the influence he was not whole enough to stand on his own. And to do it on his own, and the result of that, everyone else had to take care of him and was living as a beggar. And that was a circumstance that he was in. And the Bible describes and tells us in this scene. Amen? But in the book of Acts 3.1, I like it right here because God has not forgotten about this man. There was a man named Peter and John, right? If we want to go there together, it says, Now Peter and John went up, to, up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. So we got now Peter and John who enter into the scene of this crippled man. Hallelujah. I believe God's going to be putting some people into your scene today. Hallelujah. So they are going to at 3 p.m. to pray. To the house of God. It was different, amen? This man was at the house of God, but he was crippled. John and Peter went to the house of God, but they were going to pray, amen? Hint, hint, we got Friday prayer coming up. We got Thursday noon prayer coming up. Just want to remind you, and also Thursday morning, amen? Yes, amen? Want to go to prayer? Oh, man, you guys are not excited. Here's what God tells us. Do come to prayer. Maybe taking their lunch hour. That's what Paul and, and, and Peter and John were doing. They were going to the house of God and to the temple to connect with the living true God. Amen? Amen. 
And on the way there, hungry for God themselves. How many of you came hungry today this morning? Not for food, okay? I don't know you're a lot of hungry because of fasting, but for the word of God today, this morning. Are you hungry for what he wants to do, amen? And on their way in, you see, on their way in, hungry for God, this happened on their way as they were going, seeking for God. They passed the lame, crippled man on the entrance to the house of God, and then the story unfolds. When Peter and John were about to enter the, ta- the temple, in Acts 3, 3, it says, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for, uh, for begging for alms, And that's what he was going to do. He began asking and begging for money. So Peter looked at him along with John, fixes his gaze on him. And it's really intense gaze back and forth. And and he says to the lame man, to the beggar, to the dependent one, he says, look at me. He says, mirame, right? This morning, mirame, look at me. Meaning, I want your undivided attention. This is what God is telling us this morning. Look at me. Remind me, right? And it says, look at me. And he began to give them his attention. He was ready. He was intensely gazing at Peter and saying, yes, Peter, what do you have for me? Tell me. I am waiting. Yes, And he's all excited because I think Peter is going to pull out a a dollar bill or something, right? But he doesn't. Let's look at here. Acts 3, 5 says, he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Amen? He may not get what he wanted, but he got something. Amen? That God wanted to give him that he needed, not what he thought he needed. Amen? That's where we're going. That's where we're going. Here we go. And it says, and he looked at him, and he was intense, and he was ready to receive. So the man is ready, attentive, all ears, I'm all in, he says. All around is quiet, everything else is shut off, and I want to listen to you. And and then Peter says in 3, 6, 6, verse 6, he says, and Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. Wow. This man was waiting for something, yeah? And he didn't receive that one thing that he thought he was going to get. And the man was, really? I'm paying attention to you, and you tell me you have nothing, that you're broke, you're empty? He said, I have no silver, no gold. You have asked for money, but I can't give you, I can't get you that right there, that hell. But he says, see, for too many, the crippled man or crippled people think that money is going to solve problems sometimes. Sometimes, right? It does. Even as I come for maybe sometimes more money, more hours, that promotion, those times that that we want to work. And that's okay because we have to and we got to eat, right? God said that those who don't work, they don't eat. Amen. But when we look at this man that we're talking about right now, this crippled, and the doctor could not heal him. And all his life he's been turned upside down. Amen. And there are some things that money couldn't buy for this man anyways. And there's some things that money cannot buy for our lives sometimes, right? But God, here we go. Verse 6, but what I do have, he says, here we go. I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he says, rise up and walk. He says, but what I do have caused you to ask for money. You don't have any. No, I don't have any, but let me give you the fact of it all. Here it is. He says, what I do have, I will give you. You see, give is a grace word. Hallelujah. Give cannot be earned, what God was giving here. He didn't even have to earn it. He said, but I am going to give it to you. And this morning, God wants to give us that grace, that love, everything that he wants to pour out this morning. If you are available, if you're hungry, to come, God wants to pour it out. I'm not going to give you what he has, right? Hmm. Because for many, they're praying probably the wrong way. We sometimes are praying for maybe a better job, maybe more money, more power, notoriety. But maybe we're praying for the wrong things. Instead of praying for stuff that we want, 
when God wants to change the inner person of us. Amen? And when God can't change you and me, and we only want stuff from God, we got it backwards. Stuff is okay as long as God is giving the stuff to us. Amen? You see, all this guy wanted was enough to keep him crippled or intact, his crippleness intact. He, he, did it, he wanted just to be right there and barely make it. God is not concerned in keeping our crippleness intact this morning. Amen? Amen? He wants to break that off. He's concerned with, with changing our crippledness so that we are not crippled man or woman anymore. Amen? He doesn't want you to be seen like that anymore. He says, I have created you for more, but we get stuck on that crippleness. Is this is enough? I'll make it, Lord, thank you. But God said, no, I need to release some things off of you and remove, and I want to create the new thing that I see in you that you haven't seen, but through my word, if you read it and you understand it and you pray, and if you fast, you will see all that I have for you and that I have formed you for. Amen? But only if you let yourself be fixed by the creator. So we go to back to Peter. He is saying, I got something, but it's not what you asked for. Hallelujah. Let's try to get through this verse. I know we're stuck on 3, 6, but I love to get into the word because if you get into the word, there's something there that God wants to give us. And he was pouring out maybe little by little, but this is why we love to spend time praying and fasting and, and because sometimes those other things get in the way, right? What God wants to bring into us, amen? So here's the word. He wants to squeeze this word that has so much in it for us. And we read it again. It says, but what I do have, I give in the name of who? Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stop being crippled. Amen? That's what he said. I want you to get up and stand up, he says, on your own two feet. How? In the name. <clears throat> Let's talk about the name. Amen? Who's excited to talk about the name? Amen? One, two, three. Amen. We'll take it. In the word of God. Names have meaning. <coughs> Names are not just words given to people. See, today God has given you a name. And God has not forgotten your name. Amen? <coughs> God will call you out by your name because he knows who you are and he wants to do for you. And he has a plan for you. Amen? Just get this part right here. But here we go. You see, name matters because they were designed to fit the reputation or character of the person and place that is named. So when you look at something that has a name, it's giving you something that has to go do with the reputation or the character of the person or the place that receives the name. Now let's look at this a little bit forward in Acts 4, 7. Not too far away. Let's see what it says. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, but what power, by what power, or by what name have you done this? Because they had just been preaching, speaking to people, 5,000 got saved, and they go, what is going on here? That the people are changing and being healed and being set free? From their bondages, mm. they wanted to know what was this, what name? Peter and John are telling this man to walk and the leaders are asking under what authority? Wait, wait, wait. On whose authority and in whose power and by what name? Did you tell this crippled man to walk? Now, why do I want you to know that? Because the word name is associated with the word power also. Amen? Amen. So they want to <clears throat> they want to know the power. What power has a name attached to it that you can tell this crippled man to walk? 
and that isn't crippled anymore. Can you believe that? <laughs> so we got to know, right? In the name what? He said, in the name of Jesus, walk. They are literally saying, <clears throat> in the power of Jesus, walk. Because the name was tied to the power associated with the name. Amen? Then go back to verse uh, chapter 4 right here. We're still there. Verses 10 to 12, and we're going to, and Peter responds this way. <laughs> it said, let it be known to you all, amen, and to all the people of Israel, and we're going to say Arizona and Phoenix and the United States, amen. Yeah. Let it be known, hallelujah, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole, this crippled man, this is a stone which was rejected by your builders, which has become chief cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other. Amen? For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That is the name that he was talking about. Amen. Do you understand now what the name they were talking about, about the resurrected Christ was the name connected to this? Amen. So when Peter and John tell the man to walk, they tell the lame man to walk by the name according to the power that belongs to Jesus Christ. But let's dig a little bit deeper. He doesn't just say Jesus Christ. He doesn't just say the Lord Jesus Christ, which he is. Amen. Or the Savior, Jesus Christ, which he is. Hallelujah. He says, in the name which is in the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's a connection. We're going here. So why is Nazareth thrown in there? Why does he bring the place <coughs> where Jesus was raised? Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but raised in Nazareth. Why did he say that? That the power that got this man to walk was a power from the Christ who was raised in the town of Nazareth. <clears throat> Here, why? Because in John 146, it tells us why the name was mentioned, right? Because what could thing, can, what can anything good come out of Nazareth? Maybe there's a little town that you came from. <laughs> Summertime, Yuma, that maybe you say, like, what? The people don't even want to land in Yuma. They pass by for the gas and they go. Snacks and rod, they don't even want to go around there, right? This guy, she's really? <clears throat> but that what it was this man right here, we see. Nazareth was a no-name town. Nazareth was a town that you didn't want to go in and you did not want to go through. Right? I just told you, Yuma, you are telling me that the Jesus from Nazareth has the power to make this lame man walk. So why mention all this? Because if you today are maybe from a little town from Nazareth, meaning you didn't have maybe a good background. Maybe you didn't come from a great beginning. Maybe you didn't come from a, a nice neighborhood. Maybe you have been, uh, <clears throat> you have been, Mustered up, maybe just held back for 40 years. I don't know. Like the scripples. Well, let me tell you this morning. You see this name, Jesus from Nazareth, no name town. So Jesus can meet you no matter where you came from. He can meet you when you are down and out. He can meet you if you are up and and out, meaning if you have it all, you think you have it all, and you're good, deep down inside, you are still missing something. You are in the loss of something. So don't tell <clears throat> your background, don't tell me what your background was. Don't tell me that your daddy abandoned you. Could it be true, all these things. Don't tell me that your mom was no good or that you were raised by someone who was always drunk or maybe stoned. You see, all that thing, those things may be real, but in this name of Jesus from Nazareth, a known name place has power so he can meet any man this morning, any woman 
this morning. Amen. Any child, wherever they may be, prodigal sons and daughters, or even grandkids. Amen. He can meet them at any place, at any time. <clears throat> and when you think even that your half of your life has been over and hasn't accomplished anything, he can turn things around like this crippled man being 40 years crippled. Even though he didn't walk his lifetime, God turned it around. Amen? 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 Amen. So from now on, and this is something we all got to hear, no more excuses. Amen? No more saying, well, if I wasn't for him, or if I wasn't for the, if it wasn't for them, or if it wasn't for that circumstance that maybe got you crippled in life. You see, we can't say that no more. All that can be real in our lives. But there's this name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That tells us that we don't have to be crippled or lame anymore this morning. Amen? Amen? Because now that we have this name, bring it into this equation, into the story that had a turnaround so God can do the same in us. Amen? And we can have what? A turnaround on this morning in our lives. So know that God is not done on this day, on this morning with you. Amen? Hallelujah. God may not have gold or silver for you this morning, but what Jesus has for you today, you see the thing that he will not charge you to give it to you, he gives it to you freely. Amen? You receive it this morning? Receive that all that had God has for you. Amen? Yes, you receive it. Well, then give the good Lord a praise if you want to receive it. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm sorry. I know my voice was a little bit raspy this morning, but God is good. Amen. And he, he loves to talk to us and say, you know what? You might be crippled, but I don't want to leave you there. I want you to stand up this morning with me, please. I believe fasting this morning has got us to a place that God wanted to get us to. And if you feel that you haven't gotten there yet, that you feel that there's other steps that God starts to take, you know what? You can still do individual fasting. It's okay. Amen? Just give it on to him. Trust in him. For he is working. Even though we cannot see him working sometimes, he is working. Amen? This testimony that we prayed for this girl this morning, she is a walking testimony of prayers and prayers, you know, uh, years and years of prayer and months that God did something. Amen. That's our God. Our prayers do not go wasted. You know, God listens to the prayers, but he only answers those that we are in need of. Amen. Those are the ones. Father God, we thank you, Lord, this morning, Father. Father God, we... We surrender all, Father God. And if there's uh, something else we got to surrender, Lord God, help us, Father. Father, we want to be in your hands, Father God. In your grace and your mighty love, we want to know about that name that has the power to heal, to restore marriages, to heal those who are crippled physically, socially, mentally, Father God, spiritually, Lord, we want to want to trust on your on the Word of God, the name of Jesus, to be healing this morning, Father God. That name that has power attached to it, Father, release right now in the name of Jesus. That power that's attached to the name of Jesus Christ. Release it this morning, Lord God. Lord God, release the healing power. Release the restoration, Father God, of lives. Among siblings, among husband and wives, among family members, Lord God, release the healing right now, Lord God. Any weight 
Lord God, that has been carried, that should have been carried no more. I ask you to release them right now. Release the burden right now, Lord God. That you carry it now, Father. That they can trust on you who is greater and bigger than any problem, any issue, any sickness, anything else, Father God. You are bigger than that, Father. Father God, we trust in the name of Jesus right now, right now, Lord God. Break it right now. Break those things, Father God, those addictions that we've been fighting, Father, in our lives. Father God, it could be small addictions, Father. It could be a TV sh a show or something, whatever it may be, Lord God. It's getting in the way of spending time with you, your precious time, Father, you've given us, Father. Father God, we break those things right now to break any of that addiction, Father God. Break those chains right now. Hallelujah. For some others, it might be simple, Lord God. For others, it might be hard. But Lord God, you are the same God. You do not change your mighty and awesome and powerful God. The name of Jesus this morning, Lord God, break it and break it and break it, Lord God. Can't wait to hear what you're going to be doing, Father. There are testimonies coming out of this, Lord. We know that you are still working, Father. Thank you, Lord. Release, release this morning, Father God, your presence right now, Father God. May we take this with us as we go, Father. We ask you this in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray the Lord. Amen. Amen. How are you going? Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if John is hearing me, um, you can come out. He had something he wanted to share real quick. If he's here. Can you hear me, John? Is he coming? Yeah, we'll wait for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You want to give a quick uh, two-minute testimony or something? There we go. All right. Thank you. Good morning. Wow, when I'm listening to that preaching this morning from Pastor Emilio, oh my God, I was sitting this morning, and when he started preaching, I stood up. I couldn't sit, because I don't want to be lame. Wow, I couldn't sit. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. And in French, it said, merci beaucoup. This morning, when I was worshiping here, let me go to French first. Ce matin, lorsque je suis en train d'adorer le Seigneur, il y a quelque chose que le Seigneur m'a dit. Il m'a dit que il faut dire aux frères et sœurs que chaque jour, on s'en va pour acheter le gasoil, pour mettre dans notre voiture pour partir au travail. Donc, il faut faire la même chose dans votre vie. Il faut venir à l'église chaque dimanche. Il y a le gasoil ici que vous allez prendre et puis mettre dans votre vie pour partir travailler pour toute la semaine. Et puis peut-être le, le gasoil va finir et puis vous allez encore revenir le uh, dimanche pour avoir le gasoil là. Il faut toujours venir à l'église. Les frères, les soeurs, les mamans, les papas. C'est ce que le Seigneur m'a dit ce matin. This morning when I was standing here, I, I directly received this message from the Lord. And here is what he said. Tell the brothers and sisters, tell everyone that like the way that we can go to the gas station during the week to fill our tanks in order for us to go to work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and all the other days. Tell the brothers and sisters to come to church on Sunday to fill up their tank so that they can live from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, all the day. Tell them. Because I don't know what you're going through. I don't know. As the lawyer say, you, don't, you may not know what they are going through. But he said, just come to church and fill your tank. Whatsoever you are going through, when your tank is filled, you can go anywhere that you want to go. 
That's what the Lord told me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor John. What a word, amen? What a wonderful word. Thank you, Lord. All right, so we just want to invite everybody, if you can please stay today, um, uh, right after the service, we're going we're gonna to gather right now to celebrate uh, the life of the baby to come. Uh, Caroline uh, is a young lady. She's probably going to be coming. Um, oh, there she is. Oh, Caroline, can you please stand up? Please, please stand up. I know Mija, that is a lot to ask. So we're going to celebrate this young lady and her baby. So please, please stay. There will be plenty of food for everybody. Please help us pray for her. Help us pray for her baby. And, um, and really, I mean, we want everybody to come. Even if you didn't bring a gift, but you brought the gift of you, you can pray for her. Amen? So, all right, let us all be dismissed in the name of Jesus. So let us all stand. My husband just went to pick up the rest of the food. So, uh, so let, uh, he asked me to, to bless you guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence, oh God. We ask you, my Lord, that each one of us, my Lord, that you would remove veils, Lord Jesus, and that you would let us see, Lord, that we're no longer crippled because you are in our hearts, oh God. And it is your love and you, that you want to shine through the rest of the world. Father, help us to not uh, hold on to anything that is not of you, oh God, but hold on into your promises, oh God, and help us bring that light wherever we go, Father, whether it's at work or at home, help us be that light to one another, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, so let us all meet over there. Thank you.